This is the brand new DJI M300 drum with the L1 LiDAR sensor. Today we're going to test out how does it do real-time 3D point cloud data. Let's fly! So check it out. This right here, that's the brand new DJI L1 LiDAR. And DJI, they gave it to us to try out for the first time. So the L1, this right here, this is the L1, and this is the first time DJI has released a LiDAR. That's a 3D laser scanner for the M300. And if you guys saw the videos, they're using this thing all the time on these intro videos doing real-time 3D point clouds. And that's on the controller in real time 3D point clouds. And what a better way to test out this real time 3D point cloud capabilities of this new L1 than with our buddy Jason Bricker on these two snow machines. Let's fly. We just got done riding out here. I got the DJI M300. Now something to note about this, it is ruggedized, it's waterproof. I've seen this actually captured by a whole jet stream of water, no problem. But now, let's get this off of here and start testing out this L1. The DJI L1 LiDAR, 240,000 laser pulses every second, a 20 megapixel RGB camera co-aligned, and all the data streaming to this controller. Is it gonna work? We're gonna find out here. Awesome, so Matt's got the L1 up in the air right now, and the very first thing he has to do is use the automated calibration functionality that's on the controller. This is an automatic mission plan that just starts doing figure eights to calibrate the LiDAR. This is the same with every LiDAR. Every LiDAR has to do this calibration, and it's very similar to the fact that if you use Google Maps or Apple Maps, your phone sometimes requires you to do this figure eight motion with your hand. It gets the high accuracy calibration that the LiDAR needs, and it's all automated on this L1. So this is the active actual point clouds in real time. All right, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty wild. All right, so we're literally flying off a of LiDAR right now. This is the real time LiDAR. It's coming in, it's, it looks all right, you know? It doesn't exactly look like what I would expect in the, the video I saw from DJI, but it is LiDAR data in real time, which is pretty impressive to be done right here on this controller. I guess it can give you a pretty good idea of exactly what you're capturing when you're flying. So you know if you got coverage, you're missing any spots. It's looking like we have four main views. You have the FPV camera like you always can see on the M300, but then also you can see the point cloud view in the real time. You can see the actual camera from the L1 as well. That's a 20 megapixel camera. You can do the split screen mode. And so, and then there's two different ways to actually look at that LiDAR data. Either one, you're just looking at that live stream as you fly. The other view, this one's probably the most useful, is this global view, where you're actually able to see the LiDAR data being populated on a fixed plane, so that way you're not in the reference frame of the LiDAR, you know, the drone, you're actually in this global reference frame, just seeing the map being built in front of you. And really, that's probably the mode that I'd be using most of the time, because I really just want to know, if I'm out here flying, am I missing any gaps? Where did I miss? Where did I not hit? I need to come back over and fill in that little void. And that's kind of where that view is going to be coming into handy. It's not the, not the full LiDAR data though. It's, it's actually a down sampled. So it's doing 240,000 points every second. And probably what we're getting on the controller maybe is a 10th of that. Because really we're actually interested to see how does this work for more like a search and rescue application, just like we saw in those videos. Can we use this to capture the snow drift and potential avalanches? And if someone is in danger, can we come out here with this real time 3D data and easily navigate the hills and the slopes so that way we can avoid avalanches ourselves. 
These are all questions that I'm super excited that this device can answer for us. So we just got done flying the L1 for its maiden voyage. We saw this real-time data, and for what we see right now in this 3D view, it's pretty darn useful and pretty darn cool. But now the next step is take the L1 back, we're gonna go back to the office and use the Terra software to post-process the data, and we're gonna host it up into the Rock Cloud and share it with all of you guys so you can see it as well. Let's go back to the office. And welcome back to the office. We just got done flying this brand new L1 sensor up in the mountains in Lake Tahoe, and it was a blast. But really what you guys are here for is understanding about that real-time LiDAR data coming down to this RC controller. So I got four things I wanna share with you. Number one, DJI, you did it again, you innovated, you did something that's really cool. You put LiDAR data in real time in my palms. It's on the controller, that's really awesome. Now, this isn't the first time it's ever been done. There are other LiDAR systems out there that do real-time LiDAR data, but those systems would require an external Wi-Fi antenna, a laptop, uh, you know, just a bunch of accessories in order to make this happen. To be able to do it in my palms and to get the range you would expect from a video transmission from a DJI system, now you have LiDAR data transmitted to your palms, that's really cool and that's an innovation. So really DJI, good on you guys. We wanna see more of that. Number two, the quality of the LiDAR data that's coming down to the controller. So this data is from the real time system and also with a downsampled resolution. So what you're getting is not the full LiDAR data. You're only getting one out of every maybe 10 points. And then it's also the real time solution. So that means when you post process the data on DJI Terra, the accuracy is gonna be higher than what you're seeing in your controller and the data is gonna be more dense. So the controller is giving you like an overview of what the liner data looks like, but it's still pretty darn cool. Number three, the different modes of operation whenever you're looking at that liner data. You have two different modes. That's the real time as it's capturing it view. And this isn't really that useful when you're doing this top down nadir look, because if, for me, it was just really hard to see, you know, what is what, you know, hard to tell the difference of objects. Now, when I came down and flew level and looked off in the distance where there was nothing behind the objects, I was able to see the outlines of trees and different things like this. So in there, yeah, that was more useful. But the real time stuff for looking down, it's kind of like, hey, is it on? Yes, great. Now, the other view is this global map view. And that's where you can kind of see this global perspective and you see the map being made as it's flowing. Now this mode, you can actually see where you miss data. And so that's pretty important because you can make sure you never miss data. Uh, now, would I be using that all the time? Probably not because I'm flying a mission plan and I know the overlap and doing train following. I'm pretty confident I got all the data, but if you wanna have that extra security, you can see that global map view and know you got all the data there is. And number four, let's talk about the applications. So search and rescue, where we saw this and this whole video started from, I don't really think there's a use case here because the use of this controller right here, the, the screen is it's just small and being able to do the two finger zoom and scroll, it's really difficult. Um, I mean, I was having a hard time just trying to get to the area I wanted to see. So I think you'd be more frustrated than you'd be productive doing this. Yes, you can zoom in and move it around, but ah, I don't know, it's, it's just too hard. I, I wouldn't, yeah, and there's not like a lot of measurement tools, so it's cool to look at. Is it cool for a search and rescue? I think you should pull out your Mavic, just get that up in the air, zoom it over and get that real-time video feed and you're gonna have all the data you need. So that's my review of the L1 doing that real-time data to the controller. Now, if you guys wanna know more about the accuracy of this system and how does it stand up to other systems in the market, you know, these really expensive ones, Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be making those videos and releasing them over the next couple of weeks. We have some awesome surveyor compared data sets where we're seeing the L1 versus some really expensive systems and how does that compare to a surveyor? 
So make sure you subscribe to the channel and like, thumbs up, leave some comments below if you have any questions. Oh yeah, by the way, check out the data set. It's in the link below. You can just click down there and you can see the data that we flew with the cell one for yourself. You can download it, go at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you here next time on Indiana Drones.